In the previous episode, we explored for each store to manage a collection of states and display it in the screen. We also explored the reason why we used identified array over a regular array and how to set up an asynchronous function from environment to fetch data on web. Although technically we haven't done any API request yet, we are ready for that. Now in this video, we will build a cardless view that will be opened as a model screen. To keep things simple, let's just worry about opening a blank screen with no data. Let's build an empty view that will be the chart list view. Now in product list view, we want to display an action button in the top right corner that will trigger card list view. For that, we will need to add a navigation stack to add a navigation title. In order to add the button, we will use toolbar and add a toolbar item in the trailing location. Now, what should be executed in that button's closure? Following the TCA logic, there should be an action to show card list. Let's create it for product list domain and add the action to that button. Very good, the action is set. Now let's add a property in the state to reflect that card list is open. This will be something similar to what we need to do in vanilla CFUI with a binding boolean. Let's back to product list state and create a new property called should open card. Now let's mutate that boolean in the reducer from open card action. Okay, everything looks done so far. Now let's go back to product list view and modally open card list. To do that in Swift UI, we have to use a modifier called sheet. Let's use the one with is presented parameter. As you can see, is presented is a value of type binding bool. Remembering vanilla Swift UI again, we have to create a state property and then pass a binding object to sheet modifier. However, if you do that in this case, we will then have to deal with two sources of truth for product list view, store that is managing product list domain and this state boolean we just created. That's the reason we added to open card directly in product list domain state because we want to manage that in a single place. Now the question is, how can we then provide a binding object to cheat modifier? TCA was designed to work smoothly along with Swift UI. That's why ViewStore provides a method to transform one state property from a domain into a binding object required for cases like this. We have many options to generate a binding object. However, the one we require here is this one that returns a binding of a generic value provided. For get parameter, we can just pass a closure to make reference to should open car property or simply using a keypad that is equivalent. I will leave more info about keypad in the description below. Now for send parameter, let's pass the action that will mutate the boolean property, open card. Nice, everything looks good. Let's run the preview and see the result. Looks like it's working as expected. Let's try one more time. Hmm, it's not working anymore. The reason is not clear not yet. Let's do something to find out the root cause of this issue. For that, let's go to product list domain reducer and use a really great method called debug. What debug will do is to print in the console every time the state is mutated by any action in this domain. But to get the info, we have to use the simulator this time. Let's use the preview from product list view in the starting point of the app. All right, we are ready to run. 
we just run the app and we already got the information. That's because fetch products action was sent to the reducer, which in this case is not mutating any state value yet. But after the async call we made in the previous episode, we received the action fetch product response with a list of products has the response. And look how product list is mutated. We know that because the plus mark in every new piece of data. Now let's see what would happen if we press open cart. Open cart action is received and should open cart is mutated from false to true. Now let's see what happens when we close the view. Oh, open cart is executed again, but nothing in the state changed this time. If you think about it, that makes sense. This action is always setting should open cart to true, regardless of anything. That's the issue in our logic. We need to provide the actual state for should open cart, and that will be provided by sheet modifier, because it is receiving a binary object that internally is mutated. How can we fix this issue then? Let's change the action and add an associated value that will provide the current state of true open cart. Let's rename it to set cart view and the associated value is presented. And don't forget to update the action in the reducer. Nice. Now finally, let's fix the issue in product list view. This issue is happening because this initializer is expecting a concrete action with a concrete value. And since the value is managed by sheet, let's provide a closure and leave sheet modifier to the rest. This is fine, but there is also the alternative to provide the whole definition of set card view action and that will work too. I will keep this one for now. Now let's fix the button's action and set is presented to true always. Let's compile and no issues. Yay! Let's update the preview and see the results. This is finally working. Now let's run on simulator and see the state changes. Look how now should open cart is mutated from true to false, false to true, and so on. This is the proof that our code is working as expected. Well done everyone, that will be it for this video. In the next one, we will see how to provide data to that card list. I hope you have learned something cool today. Check out the rest of TCA videos and more in the description below. And remember, my name is Pete and this, this is Sufan Tips. Thanks for watching and have a great day.